Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Good morning and welcome. Welcome to Zion Lutheran Church. Good to be with you. I was gone last week. Thanks to Pastor Haupt for, uh, and the rest of the team for leading in my absence. It's good to be back. Good to continue to celebrate that our true hope is that Jesus is alive. And not just that it, it happened and that it's true, but what it means for us, that our God loves us, that he is with us, that our, our sins are forgiven. We have peace now and hope of true peace and eternal life with Jesus forever. So welcome as we continually remind ourselves that and live into the story of what God has done for us. I forget the number of the first hymn. Is it six? No. Is it 633? I was going to say that. Ah, 633. I might, you, it's a longer hymn. I invite you to be seated for the first uh, many verses, and then the very last verse will stand. Shall we sing?
gather in the name of the true God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. He is the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. He puts joy into our hearts. He has lavished us with love and called us his own children. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. We know that Jesus came in order to take away sins, as 1 John says, yet we often act in ignorance and doubt. We often grow angry with God's plans and activities in our world when we have no right to do so. As we draw near to the glory of the risen Christ, let us first consider our sins and our unworthiness to approach his presence. Will you join me first in silence, then in prayer? Heavenly Father, we have often walked in doubt and fear. We have failed to live in righteousness, innocence, and blessings. We hear your call to repent. For the sake of the risen Christ, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we will follow in his footsteps, both now and when he returns to glory. 1 Corinthians talks about if Christ had not been raised from the dead, we would still be in our trespasses and sins. But Christ rose from the grave and death no longer has dominion over him. God has called you his children and that is what you are. As a called and ordained servant of the risen Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We wait for Christ's return and the restoring of all things. Amen. You may be seated as we sing Thine the Amen, Thine the Praise, hymn number 680.
Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading, which you can find on page 911, if you want to find it in the Bible in front of you. It's also printed in the bulletin, is from Acts chapter 3. After the Holy Spirit comes and fills the new Israel, the new church at Pentecost, then you see, the, it often gets called the Acts of the Apostles, it's really the continued Acts of Jesus in his church through the Holy Spirit as Jesus is ascended and reigning and sent his spirit, and you start to see what God is doing. It says, while the lame man who was now healed clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's, astounded. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people. Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked for a murder to be granted to you. And you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And his name by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore. And turn again, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all the things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson on page 1022 is from 1 John. John wrote the Gospel of John, but also three other letters. 1 John is the larger, then 2 and 3 John vie for among the shortest in the Bible, very short letters. 1 John is a little longer, and we pick it up in chapter 3 today. That's what we're going to talk about a little later, and so I'll actually talk some about chapters 1 and 2, and as 3 continues next week, this is kind of part 1 of things that uh, continue in the reading to next week. John writes as a, I think of an older, fatherly, pastoral guidance of how to live Christian life because of what Jesus has done. He says, See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin, no one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You stand as we prepare to hear from the Gospels. Hallelujah, we know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. 
Death no longer has dominion over him. Hallelujah. Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? Gospel reading is from Luke chapter 24. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into hell and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Christina Fugoseth, in advance for sharing with us now and a little later. Thank you, Pastor Help, for mentioning last week. Between services, quickly grab, uh, first of all, if there's people you don't know, they feel just as awkward about not knowing you as you do about them. So just (laughs) hand them a cookie or a cup of coffee and break the ice, tell them your name and go. Uh, Also, uh, go keep going up the stairs on the far side of the fellowship hall at 945, and Christina's going to share more about uh, what God has been doing at Grace Ministries in Guatemala as We've had a long-term partnership. You've been there many, many times, as well as uh, others from the congregation. So thanks for sharing now the the kind of appetizer a little bit to say, you do want to get coffee and a cookie and come here in a little bit. Buenos dias. Good morning. Thank you for all your support. Three of us from this church went, Junior, um, Char, and myself, Char Norris, went to Guatemala January 25th through February one. I stayed an extra week. You're only going to get a little taste of one of the highlights of the trip, which was Colegio Jet Children, when Colegio Jet was founded in 2020 to break the cycle of poverty through education and biblical instruction, and also giving the children some food so they get two meals a day at the school. And Jet stands for Jesus and Education Transform. The average education in Guatemala is fourth grade. So there's a lot of illiteracy, a lot of poverty. So you're gonna get a clip, a little glimpse of the children and their enthusiasm singing in English, um, a song you all well know. Thank you, please join me later.
Thank you in advance, Christina. Hopefully it's, uh, why did your appetite want to come and hear more? You might have heard this already too many times, but I always have to remind myself uh, when we say, when, when Christina said, uh, ma many have a third or fourth grade uh, education max, we forget that based on where we live, a public education school system means anybody can go to a school at some point. That's not true in the world. Most play, many countries, no matter what you have to pay for it, and even if it's $300 a year in some countries, pe some people can't, and so their kids don't go to school. That, that is what happens. And so many of sponsored students there, not just learning, and a gift to learn English in a global world, but learning about Jesus as well. And so thanks for sharing that, and look forward to more uh, between services. Scott, thanks for leading young worshipers, age three through third grade. We're all part of God's family together, and we have a special time of teaching uh, now, and gather back uh, later during the sermon. Good to see you, and good to see you uh, when you return. The table in the back, hopefully you grabbed a bulletin with announcements and order of worship. There's also offering plates there. Thank you for all the ways so many of you give generously to God's work here at Zion. You can do so online as well. Speaking of online, those that have found us by live stream, glad you found us, however you did, and pray God's blessings on your day and on your week, and uh, if possible, we'd love to, to meet you in person as well. Continue to read the uh, news notes bulletin to see people to be prayed for on the prayer list, ways to serve and engage in what God is doing among us here. One that's not listed, Aaron, where are you, Aaron? Raising, Aaron Gerboth is a Hope student who plays the cello very well in the Hope College Orchestra. They have a concert on Friday at, is it 7? Seven? 7 at the Jack Miller Center. Beautiful uh, orchestra hall. From what she told me, playing a lot of fun things. You're welcome and invited to go. And you sit on the end still, right? So you actually see Aaron if you go. <laughs> easy, easy to spot. So 7 o'clock this Friday. Thanks for sharing with us as well. And again, thanks for gathering as God's people today. We continue by singing hymn number 725. Spirit, speak through your word, that you would point us again to where our true hope is found and true life is found in Jesus alone. Point us to him, grip our hearts to him, that we would trust him and that you would make our lives look more like our Savior. In Jesus' name, amen.
We're going to look at 1 John 3 today, and this verse stands as a bridge in many ways between the first couple chapters, things that have come before, and the rest of the book. So we're going to keep returning to this verse. Uh, I'll I better just be honest and give you a warning at the outset. Uh, it'll be a little longer than you might be used to a sermon today. Hopefully, uh, it's worth it. Some added features here. But it's really starting a section that we'll be into again next week. So it's really part one of two. But here it is. If you can read it somewhere, say it with me. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God and so we are. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. That is good news. That is gospel good news of what your God is like, what he has done for you, and what our purpose is. And so we're going to pick this apart a little bit, phrase by phrase, and then kind of unpack a little bit. First, the first word is this. See. See, if you're reading 1 John, which we know we're skipping to chapter 3 here, but then our epistle readings will follow mostly through the rest of the book, 3, 4, and 5, and so on. John has already said the word see. You actually heard it in a few different readings today. So when a writer, an author, you know, like comedians, they'll tell a joke, and then if they're really good, they'll like refer to the joke later on, and then you laugh like more time, like double because they brought it back. It's called a recall. In, in comedy, at least, in uh, books, you know, return to themes or words, especially in the Bible, when somebody like John, who's very intentional, pulls out in chapter 3 and says, see, you're supposed to go, oh, he already said that. He already said that early on, and I'm supposed to know. So we're going to do that and see, oh, wait, what did, he want us, what did he tell us already about seeing? Before we get there, though, pause. As many of you, if you're here last week, you knew I wasn't. So I was gone somewhere else, so I wanted to let you see a little bit of where I was. And uh, I'm not sure all the messages that were uh, relayed of my whereabouts. Uh, My oldest son, Samuel, and I traveled to the Colombian, Peruvian Amazon, so far away, and I sweat through my clothes for 24-7 for 10 days straight. Wonderful. No, wonderful. My kids uh, study a lot of uh, Spanish in school, so I was able to... My son was able to speak a lot and learn a lot and have wonderful experiences together. And sometimes uh, you have to see to to believe or to understand, right? Seeing is an important thing about life, about faith, different things. So in part, uh, you can see some of the things we did. One of the first thing, uh, where's Junior? You're here, right? Junior, this video is for you. You'll You'll recognize your favorite animal. I was trying to get this macaw to land on my arm because everybody else would, but he just wouldn't. That's me waiting for him to... No, he wouldn't. I keep trying. It did not go well. <laughs> so Samuel loves interacting with a lot of wildlife, and I tried. Some went better than others. That one did not. Um, but... And then uh, I did hear that it said that I was on a cruise, and so I wanted to share a bit of that. I did go on a boat. In fact, in the Amazon region... There basically aren't cars, boats are cars. Boats are buses, but that's, the, that's in many places of the world, if the waterways, the, that's the way to get places to move commerce to do things. And so, yes, I spent multiple days on a boat, so I guess you could call it a cruise. Let me show you the cruise ship. I, I, knew, what I, was, I knew what we were getting in for. Uh, that was just Samuel and I, my brother and two of his kids. We were together first five days and then split. And then uh, Samuel and I went, and I knew this is what we were looking for, but when I did first lay eyes on it, he reminded me, Dad, when you first saw what was our boat, you said that wasn't a boat, that was some sunken barge. It floated, it went, it was fine. But that is the, you might call it the ground freight of the Amazon. If you want to send anything up and down the river, uh, you, like you'd you know, go pay post office or UPS ground shipment, and you put it on that and it gets somewhere. So if you live in a village way far away from everything and you have... Uh, some sort of product you want sold at the market somewhere else, you got to load it, pay for it, get loaded on, and sent somewhere else. So a lot of stuff, cargo down there, and then people cargo are allowed to be on the top two floors. And so what you have to do is climb that plank to get on, 
wherever it is, that's the side of the river there, climb and get on and go find a spot. So uh, that's what we did. There's no ticket. You, uh, you're actually told, oh, yeah, somebody will wake you up in the middle of the night and ask you for money. Don't be startled. You're not getting robbed. They're just <laughs> like, oh, huh. look forward to that. So you, we walked in, walked up these stairs, a lot of things getting stored underneath, uh, animals and boxes of things. And you have to go buy a hammock and a rope somewhere in town, climb those steep, I think I hit my head a few times going up those. And then that's the cockpit up there. Sorry if it makes you dizzy. And then you go find a spot in the back and tie up your hammock to welded rebar. Those are rooms you could rent, but you don't want to. They're like 100 degrees. And then you set up a hammock and stay there for, well, as long as it takes to get there. They say 48 plus hours, but with every stop uh, to pick up stuff, piles of bananas somewhere, animals. Some, one was a bulldozer that had to get driven on somehow. That was interesting. And stuff gets moved up and down, and people get on and off. And so constantly people coming. Uh, but most of the time, you sat there and looked out. That's actually a narrow inside passage, uh, so it's not the it's a, it's calmer, but there's trees, bugs, things, and you kind of hang out at average, my phone said, eight miles an hour. So it took, took a while to get somewhere, right? So you can see a little bit of what we did. So I basically hung out in a hammock for three days, and oh, and my, my cruise cost $25. Isn't that great? And they even fed you some food, whether you want to eat it or not. You know, go to the grocery store and load up before. So that is some things you can see that that, uh, now you understand a little bit if I tell you something where I was or where that that helps you understand or helps you or at least say, oh, wait, uh, Ryan didn't just go home and lay on the couch for a week and pretend like he went somewhere. And I'm not sure I believe him. If I show you something, you you go, oh, wait, wait, we know that that happened. John is doing a bit of that when he writes, especially the beginning of 1 John. Now, our verse in 3 says, See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. But if we take that word see and jump back to where he first starts using it, it's at the beginning of the letter. Verse 1. 1 John begins, That which was from the beginning. He's talking about Jesus. Which we have heard, which we have, there it is, what? Seen with our eyes. He's talking about him and the other disciples. They have seen Jesus with their own eyes, not just before he was crucified and risen, but bodily resurrected Jesus. We have seen with our eyes. We looked, we touched. They touched his hands and his side. They fed him food. He was alive, risen. Concerning this word of life, that which we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you. That is Christian ministry. That is Christian life in a, in a nutshell. You simply pass on what you've received. We saw Jesus. We, we know that he is our Savior, our Good Shepherd. God come to rescue us. He, he was crucified and he is alive and, and his forgiveness flows to you. And we, we've seen that and now we tell you. See. What does he want you to see? When he says see, he says, we, we've seen the real Jesus, and here's what, he, here's what that means. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God? Wow, and so we are. So the first word, see. Okay, let's pick to that next phrase then. He says, see what kind of love. In English, we ask the word love to do a bit too much, right? We, we say we love a lot of things, and some of them are important, and some of them are not important, right? Like your spouse and, you know, some candy or some food, or, right, we, we use a lot with it. What kind, see, what kind of love? Famously, a lot of other languages ha- have many words to, to kind of break it down. Greek has yeah, three to four, Hebrew has more, and others of, is this a uh, marital love? Is this a friendship love? Is this a deep commitment? Is, see what kind of love the Father has given to us. You see, if God is the author of life and all things, he gets to tell us what love is. He gets to define it and show us what it is and what it means to love someone else. And John in his gospel and here tells us over and over again, What kind of love has God given us? 
the kind that would have a father send his one and only son far away to a faraway land and give his life and die to rescue wandering sinners. No, that might not, should not make sense because that's the heart of God. What kind of love do we have in God? Well, John actually tells us. So what kind of love? So this is chapter 1 again. So we're in chapter 3 and you go to chapter 1 and, and uh, he's you know, summarizing what he's already said. What kind of love have we been given? Well, he tells us, this is the message that we heard from Jesus. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. The blood of Jesus' his son cleanses us from all sin. Now, you probably recognize if you've been going to a uh, Lutheran church for a while, or even others, you recognize this verse in our liturgy. If we say we have no sin... We deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What kind of love are we given and not even earned? Because you can't. It's given. See, John says, see what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children, that we are given something we don't deserve that is to be called a child of God, that which only Jesus truly has earned, to be a true child, true son of the Heavenly Father, and he gives it to you by faith, all that he has earned. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God, and so we are. Okay, let's keep moving. Uh, See what kind of love given that we should be called. So this is actually where we're kind of going. I said, as I said, a little lengthy today. This is actually kind of the point where we're driving to is because chapter 3 is talking about what it means to be children of God. What it looks like. what What are we asked to do? What do our lives look like? And so John... All over the place in this letter says, my children, little children. You can, you can imagine the, the pastoral, fatherly, almost grandfatherly saying, no, my little children, I, I want you to know how much God loves you and what Jesus has done for you and that it impacts how you live each day. You are a new person in Jesus. So chapter 2, he says, my little children, I am writing these things. So that you may not sin. Oh, okay. So he comes out and tells you why he's writing so far. And it's not just that you know that you are forgiven because of the blood of Jesus. That is 100% absolutely true. God's gospel gift to you. And that's part of it. But because of that, your life is different. Christians are different. We're called to be different. And so he says, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. For as much as we confess our sins, that they are absolutely forgiven. Excuse me to verse 6. Whoever abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. So Christians will wrestle with, okay, we, we trust in Jesus' grace alone, and yet our lives should be different. And then yet we struggle when our lives don't look different. Or we look at other people and say, their life doesn't look like Jesus too much. And how does this, how does this work? Well, I'm not going to be able to satisfy all of your questions because it is a, uh, a mystery of Christian life. But a couple things are true, always true. And that is, We are children of God because we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one who died for you in your place and gives you his forgiveness and righteousness. And he gives it to you over and over and over again. And at the same time, he wants to not leave us in our sin, but call us to a new and better life in Jesus. Even as we uh, fail and falter and need forgiveness again and again. So then John tells him, Okay, if you're children of God, then how does that look? Do not love the world. He's not saying like tangible things, but the sinful world that doesn't follow God. Do not love the sinful world or the things of the world. The desires of the flesh, that is your sinful self, not just wanting food. The desires of your sinful flesh, the desires of the eyes, and pride in possessions is not from the Father, but from the world. 
So, unpacking John's verse from, from chapter 3, he tells us what he means by all these things. Those three things, desires of the flesh, desires of the eyes, and pride in possession, probably sum up a lot of temptations we face, don't they? Yeah. Desires of our sinful flesh. Sometimes we're drawn to things we know aren't good for us and we know aren't godly, and yet you're still drawn to them. Okay, Jesus, help us. Your desires of your eyes. Your, your eyes, as Jesus says a lot about, uh, where your eyes go can determine about your whole body and your heart following after. Uh, if in some ways we keep our eyes where they should be on Jesus, a lot of things go better in life. Or pride in possessions. Very, it can be a temptation to all of us as well. So those things are not from the Father, but from the world. So where do we go with that? Well, it says, See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. So because you have been made a child by the grace of God, you live as a child of God, not as a child of someone else, or, or an orphan, or a... Uh, or a feral child, you are a child of your good heavenly father and want to do what he wants. Not because you're gaining something from him, but because you already have everything. So, now we're into chapter 3. So now actually we can start the sermon today. How's that? And we're finally to verse <laughs> chapter 3. Here it is. See what kind of love the father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. And then it continues. The reason... That was in your bulletin today. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, you hear again that, that mix of absolute care and love, and yet, exhortation, instruction, this is what's asked of you. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be hasn't appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Okay, that might be, it's a lot of text. I get that. It might be tough to look at. So when I put it like this, I think that's what sticks out the page for me. John's telling us, guess what? If you have been forgiven by Jesus and you trust in him, his blood covers you. Beloved, we are God's children now. And so, yes, our lives are meant to be different. Meant to look different. So, where do we go with that? We are God's children now. Uh, and then the reading continues. It says, everyone, this is chapter 3, who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawless. I'm going to pause there for just a second. We often... Want to, because the devil is very good at telling the same lie over and over again that he told to Adam and Eve, and that is, this will make your life better. Whatever it is, whatever it's the fruit he offered, it's, it's this will make your life better, and in the moment we believe it. And then we then often realize uh, the short-term pleasure is long-term pain. Jesus, forgive me again, I need you. That is the Christian life in some ways. But then John says, everyone who makes a practice of sinning practices lawlessness. That word practice is really what I'm going to focus on the rest of today and uh, next week. Is do we pay attention to our life and what we are practicing on, in our daily lives because that will lead us somewhere. It's common to think and it, we probably want to think, oh, I can do whatever I want as long as I don't hurt anybody. It, it's not going to, you know... Sin, oh, you know, we're, we're, that's just old-fashioned churchy stuff. You know, we're, we're enlightened now. We don't have to follow old moral things. To say sin is lawlessness is simply to say if you take all the boundaries away from everything in life, suddenly everything deteriorates. And I, I hate to give a very sad example, but the kind of chaos that's unfolded in Haiti is a really good example where we love to, everybody in America loves to complain about our politicians and our governments, and other countries do too, uh, and uh, I'm not immune either, like it's, it's, it's like pastime sport, right, in America, and yet there is something far worse than even having a, uh, and many Christians live in, yes, bad, oppressive governments, and uh, there's something that's probably even worse than a Christian in a bad, oppressive government, it's a place like many Christians suffering in Haiti is you can't even go outside because there is absolutely no law at all. Lawless, that's kind of the, 
the apocalyptic picture of without God's good will and boundaries, what sin is lawlessness, and uh, it's bad. But five, you know that Jesus appeared. He came to take away sins, and in him there's no sin. That's good news. No one who keeps on sinning, it's either seen him or know him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. Amen. Right? Yes. We know the end of the story, and it's that Jesus who is risen will come and end all evil one day for good. Yet we are left dealing with this on our own daily lives over and over again. And so what do we do? We are God's children now, which means we know these two things. You know that Jesus came to take away sins. And yet in our daily life, whoever practices righteousness is righteous because he is, only because we're connected to him, but whoever makes a practice of sinning leads us on a very different path. Now, the word practice is what really helps me. We're not talking about, God, I need you, I I messed up again, help me. It's, uh, what is your daily life telling you and forming you into? What what are you practicing? I I think it was helpful for me a number of years ago to to think about it this way, and that is we're always practicing for something. Today is a practice for something tomorrow. And so if I do something one time today, good or, or bad or neutral, it's today, but then it's, I might do the same thing again tomorrow. And if I uh, make a practice of eating a uh, double Whopper on Monday and then on Tuesday and then on Wednesday and do that every single day for a long time, you know where that practice is going to get me, right? You know, a, a stay down the street at Holland Hospital, right? Practices become habits, become lives. And as Christians, whoever practices righteousness, that is whoever over and over again, comes to Jesus every day in his word and kneels before and says, Jesus, I need you over and over again. That's going to do something to us because it's the Holy Spirit working in his word and in his sacraments to to point us again to, to where our true hope is. So one of the questions I'll end up leaving with you today, we'll return in a minute to it, is how do we deal with with temptation and sin as Christians? This is the the rest of chapter 3 that we'll get to next week, is we deal with it as children of God. That is, we are all tempted, we are all faulty, we are all frail, and at the same time, we are still forgiven children over and over and over again. And there is this strange mystery and tension that's hard to put our finger on. But we practice righteousness, that is, we come back to God's word and his grace because it does change us and it does make us different. Okay, hold that. I want to t- show you a few more things. And that is the <laughs> practice of righteousness or practice of lawlessness uh, on our on our uh, cruise I told you we were not the only passengers there were people passengers and there were all sorts of passengers that's under a stairway there were some chickens uh, which eventually got eaten chickens over here cutting them up over here that's the whole thing of ducklings and uh, Samuel really liked all of the animals it's like let's go find more uh, we were laying in our hammocks the first night, and I hear pigs squealing. I'm like, I think those are pigs squealing. Somebody else didn't believe me. I'm like, I, I, I really think they are. So I wanted to go find him. And then we got some cows on, the, all sorts of. Uh, but I did say, I'll tell you a story about the cow in a minute. That's, those are two huge bulls behind the milk. They were not happy. Things did not go well. Getting that, They did not want to get on. It was bad, and they were out of control, and somebody was going to get hurt. And I said, don't go over there. Okay. You can touch the little chicks. You can go talk to the pigs in the pen over here. Don't go to the big cow. Like, bad. His legs are longer than your arms. He can reach you. Like, stay away from the pigs. Don't go over there. Okay, yeah, you know where this is going, right? Uh, so. All right, Sam, what friends do we got here? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, those are our three, three little pigs. You named breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um. But then, so that white cow, they pulled up to the, just on the embankment, and you're like, oh, what's the car getting on now? 
was somebody yanking this cow who did not want to go. And it was like classic movie scene, cartoon scene where cow sits down. I'm not going. So a team of like six, this was like poor man's running of the bulls. Uh, they like grabbed the cow from the side, fr guys front, behind, whatever, and they're like going to run this thing onto this little chute in between a freezer unit for fish and in there. But then once you yank it onto a boat and it's running, then there's like three guys in front of this charging cow. What do you do? So then they, they're climbing up that stuff to get out of the thing. It was running out of the milk cow, I guess, trying to get out of the way. So that's why I was like, no, you're not going there. But uh, temptation can be strong. Samuel, you are not touching the animal. But a little later, uh, here's what happened. I know it's hard to hear, but can you hear the dialogue? So, so to, be, uh, to be fair to my son, after a while I could tell that that pig was different, and I thought, okay, and he was at the end of his rope, so you could touch him without, you know, him snapping or whatever. And so I said, okay, fine, you, you can go and touch that one, just that one. Uh, and he gave me permission, but he expects uh, probably royalties if there's too much... Uh, Positive interaction with, with his footage, I guess. I don't know. Uh, he, uh, so he asked, and I said, okay, fine. You can, you can fine touch. So he, he did obey and didn't, uh, didn't touch, but he, he wanted to. And I said, okay, fine. I'll go with you, and you can touch that one. It's at the end of his row, but he can't lurch at you. I got it. But then we talked about this after. It's like, so the moment, if you noticed, he petted the nice piggy there, it was what? I want to go touch the cow. Right? That's, do you see how that works? Practice of righteousness or practice of, it, it, goes, it keeps going in the same direction. Right? So, uh, it's, and you can hear me at the end. No, you're not. You're not touching the cows, okay? My heavenly father voice is not as good as God's. It's, it was more grumpy there. But you see how that works, right? Oh, I finally got this one thing that I wanted that I wanted. And I did say it was okay. So he was, he was obedient. But then it's, oh, I got this. Uh, what I really want is that. Now, to be fair, he didn't go over to touch the bull and the cows. That would have been bad. But you see how this works. What you practice, you'll keep on doing. And if you practice, it says righteousness, that is going to Jesus each and every day and saying, Jesus, I need you for everything. You are my life. You are my forgiveness. And I want to be like you. Will you make it so? Your life will end up in that direction. As opposed to, oh, as soon as I uh, give in to one thing, I want the next thing. And, and then you're on this path of lawlessness that, that will leave pain and destruction everywhere. So the one thing I want to leave you with is this. Since we are God's children now, what are you practicing for? That is, what does daily life look like for you and, and for me, knowing that every day in some ways is a practice for the next day in godly ways or in ungodly directions? Since you are God's children now, what are you practicing for? We're going to return to this next week, as I said. Think about it. Maybe uh, I'll be impressed if you remember uh, that we talked about this. If you can read this verse again, say it with me. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God, and so we are. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus, for all people, according to their needs. Lord Jesus, you have defeated death, defeated sin, forgiven all of ours, 
in your blood shed on the cross and in your glorious resurrection. Would you continue to send your Holy Spirit to our lives and to our church and to all your people around the world that we would receive with joy the gospel and live lives according to it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray that you bless those that serve here in your church, those that serve in their vocations to make ministry happen here, those that serve uh, to in jobs in the, our cities and our communities in all the ways and all the skills that you've given. Would you please continue to sharpen people's minds and bodies and skills that they might love their neighbors as themselves as they serve you in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, preserve our nation and its leaders, president, governor, all elected and appointed officials, that they might uh, practice righteousness and serve you as they serve the good of their people. Continue to bless and protect those serving in our armed forces, especially those in our own families, our own friends, that you'd bring them home to their families safely. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, come near to those who are in need of compassion, in need of healing, in need of help, in need of hope. You know who they are. Come near. Grant your presence, your strength, your healing. Lord, in your mercy. To your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand and pray as we have been invited by our Savior, our Father. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And give us the temptation to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now as we go to serve the Lord, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor, give you peace now and forever. Amen.